This is the Tom Oberheim Two Voice Pro. It's a modern recreation of Tom's Two Voice synthesizer from the 70s. Now, the Two Voice and SEMs in general or the four voice or the eight voice, these synthesizers are some of the most iconic synthesizers of the 70s and some of the most embraced synthesizers by true analog enthusiasts. A lot of the professional uh, musicians I know that love analog synthesizers love uh, SEM based synthesizers the best. So we're talking about one of the most fantastic sounding and most embraced synthesizers of all time. And so it is an honor to be exploring the Two Voice Pro, the modern version. Uh, and it is a modern version. There are a lot of differences. There's uh, The sequencer is updated. And especially if you look up here along the top, it's been made modular. The synthesizer expander module is relatively basic. It's capable of a huge amount of functionality, a huge amount of outcome. But in general, it's a pretty straightforward setup. But once uh, you take an SEM and you make it modular, you've got something incredible, an extremely powerful synthesizer. So uh, we're going to explore it and I'm really excited and thrilled to be able to do so because this is one of the best sounding synthesizer types of all time. Okay, let's dig into the oscillators. Now, it's not going to be incredibly complicated, as you can see. The oscillator sections are relatively simple in the synthesizer expander module. So, uh, first, if we want to hear anything at all, we have to go into the VCF mixer area here and choose what waveform we want. We have uh, knobs for VCO1 and VCO2 and external. We'll talk about external because it's really cool. But you basically have a single knob that allows you to choose two different waveforms and uh, one of two different waveforms and the intensity, the amplitude of that waveform. So uh, we're going to go with saw because it's my favorite. That is a rich, full, warm sounding saw. I don't want to go too crazy about it, but I mean, honestly, that is a beautiful sounding saw. And I don't know if it's because we're getting a little bit of the filter interaction uh, with the output from that saw, but that, <laughs> I just absolutely love that saw. So we're on VCO1 and we're listening to the saw. Um, the range, uh, the pitch range of the saw is controlled in three different ways, actually. Let's look at the first, it's this main knob up here. Now you might say, you might notice that there isn't an incredibly wide range. We're not going all the way down to the clicks and all the way up to uh, dogs being upset with uh, the frequency range of this oscillator. However, we can achieve a greater oscillator uh, frequency range by Im using the transpose function down here. Um, but for right now, we also have a fine tune knob. So it makes tuning really quick and easy. And that's important when you have a synthesizer that does not have presets. And uh, you also, you know, you can't hone in on a single frequency really quickly with a setup like this. So to be able to do the wide range and then the fine tune very, very quickly uh, is paramount. Um, we're gonna dive right now into this external knob and you may ask yourself why. Are you bringing some other synthesizer in? No, the external knob has multiple functions and that's super awesome. One of the functions is this. For those of you with perfect pitch, you just said, aha, because uh, what we're hearing right here is A440. So when you turn the external knob to the left towards number one, uh, and there's nothing plugged into the external input, you get a very kind uh, A440 to tune to. So let's do that. Bam. 
Okay, so tuning is quick. Now, you know, we could tune VCO2 to that as well. And we're perfectly in tune, which is great. I want to point out right now, because I don't think I've said it yet, this is wholly analog. There, there is not digital functionality in the synthesizer portion of this. This is true to life, original analog VCOs, envelopes, everything. So that's really awesome. But it also means that there could be some tuning variants, which is what you want in an analog synth, I might add. So uh, tuning is really quick and easy with the way that I just showed you. So we have talked about the sawtooth wave and the tuning. Let's have a quick listen to the pulse wave. That is a very warm, uh, delightfully hollow sounding square wave. I really like it. Let's listen to the full range of the sawtooth wave while we're at it. Wow. So using the transpose buttons here on the left, we have a wide range of frequency. Anyway, back to the pulse wave. Let's jump down a little bit. Uh, you can adjust the pulse width of the, the pulse wave. Right now, it's right in the center, which is 50%, which is our traditional square wave sound. So that's more of the nasal pulse width sound. And we can go all the way. It goes down to 10%, so we never get to silent. We don't get to a duty cycle of zero. We do get down to 90. Or get up to 90. Anyway, so that is our square and our pulse wave.